What is going on guys? It is Tony K with Urban Girl Scout Media, living the dream as always, and coming to you guys today to talk about Modern Horizons 2. It's June 7th, it's 2 o'clock, and I am as excited as I can be right now as we close in on release day. 11 days from now, we get Modern Horizons 2. And let me just start with, this is one of these sets that I believe has caused some of the most polarizing opinions in the YouTube Magic Content Creators uh, Stratosphere, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to try and talk about a couple of those things here today in a very simple and very uh, laid back, hopefully laid back, style. But before I get to that, let me just say, if you guys can do me a favor, sorry, I was turning the music down a little bit. If you guys can do me a favor, Smash the like button, make sure you subscribe, comment below. I don't even care if you say anything related to the video. You can speak a foreign language. You can tell me that Tony has six toes, is a turd, or smells like a salamander. Does not matter. All those things actually do help us here on uh, the content game, and it means the world. But enough of that. Let's get to it. Modern Horizons 2. What a set. Let me, let me just start with my overall perspective. I don't know how to feel about it. I really don't. On the one hand, this is a powerful set. And it's going to change Magic the Gathering, both formats and the way products are being released. There's so many things here with the set to unpack that I think it's worth noting how complicated it is to really land on something. Now, that's why I said it's kind of polarizing. Because I've seen some YouTube and content creators say that this is absolute trash. That yes, there's power in the set, but the price point's too high. The pseudo reserve list is ridiculous. The fetch lands are great, but it's going to be too hard to buy them if you don't get them right away. Things like that. And I've seen people on the other side of the fence where they say, this is wonderful. They're making cards that are functional copies, different colors of cards on the reserve list. This is wonderful. They're printing fetch lands again. But it seems like everyone agrees the price point is an issue. And that's where I'm going to start today. If you look on Amazon right now, here June 7th, you are looking at about 275 to 260 roughly, to buy a draft booster box. It's about 250 maybe a little bit more, to get a set booster box. And it's about $100 to get a fat pack. Now, I'm just going to be honest and upfront, that price point is fucking insane. There is no reason to have a price point that high for a product that is not secret layer, you know, from the vault, things like that. Uh, I wish I would have done a little more research on this before I did this video, but I am willing to bet with no research at all, I'm willing to bet that since the first master set, because that's kind of how we got on all these supplementary special sets, is the first modern master set, I'm willing to bet that the inflation from that time to now, so we're looking at like, what, 2014, 2013, around there, something like that, to now, so about eight years, I'm willing to almost guarantee, with again, with no knowledge, that the inflation on the dollar from that time to now, Watsy is going way above what the inflation curve should be, and they're price gouging. They're, they're increasing the prices to a point that I think is unhealthy. And that is one of the biggest negatives I have about this set. Is the fact that it prices out the casual players pretty fast. And let me give you some examples. First off, within the past four or five years, I went from being a casual player that had a decent magic budget to more of I'm going to make money off this game because there's people making money. Now, I'm not saying that I'm a big time high roller, but I have some decent awareness of my surroundings before that though i used to buy fat packs of the new sets i used to love buying fat packs they give you the the books or the card book uh they give you the dice the land some foilies and you get a bunch of packs okay um fun fact is that one of the things i did to get so many booster or to give me so many fat packs was on the Super Bowl every year, I'd pick a winner. And if the team that I picked to win 
did well and took the trophy home, well, guess who's going to buy himself a fat pack, no matter what the most recent set was. Tom Brady won me a lot of fat packs. I should have picked the Eagles in the one Super Bowl, but you'll have that. Those are generally about $35 to $45, depending upon when you look at it and the sets and where you got it. Here today, this fat pack of Modern Horizons 2 is going to cost you $100. And that's just online, where it's a little bit more... It's a little bit more monitored and, monitored and tracked. I believe that there's going to be a lot of local game stores that are going to jack the prices up on this. I hope to be wrong, but that's just my, my opinion. Is that we're going to see a lot of people talking about that. I also think there's going to be a lot of game stores that are not going to get a lot of this product because it's really expensive. If it's expensive for the players to buy, it's expensive for the stores to obtain. So, I don't know about that. I'm not a fan of the price point here. I also think that they put, this is going to sound weird, but part of that price point issue, they they put too much power in the set. Um, I think right now there's a total of, let me, let me do a count. I'm on the price guide. Uh, so we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40 cards. I'm going to count the ones that are at $9.99. We have 40 cards as of June 7th at 2 o'clock that are over $10 in value. All of them are rare and mythic. But 40 cards are double digit dollar value. With about 10 cards in the $8 and up range. So they could go either way. Now you might be thinking, what's your point here, Tony? What are you trying to get at? Well, some of these cards are going to go down, but pre-release, 40 cards out of 300 and, well, 303, 303 cards, 40 of them are about the price of a pack at pre-release. And some of them, when you get past the $20 range, you're talking about some cards like Ragavan, Nimble Pilfer. That's the one drop Monkey Legend or Monkey Pirate. That's $75 right now. The New Sword, $70. Chatterfang Squirrel General, $60. Cabal Coffers Reprint, $60. Grief, $56. $57, excuse me. That's a lot of money. It's going to be really hard for players to A, open packs and get the cards they want and b for casual players to justify getting this kind of um money into the game i mean that maybe i'm looking at it the wrong way and feel free to comment if i am but i'll tell you guys looking at these prices thinking about all the casual players that are going to have a hard time justifying spending 40 50 dollars on a single card some of them are going to have a hard time doing that. And I think that is actually one of the biggest risks to Magic, is pricing out casual players. And I, I don't want to say casual players in low-end terms, but the players who can't go out and drop $275 fucking dollars on a draft booster box. Guys, I saved money for this set, knowing that it was going to be expensive. But between looking at the absurd amount of cards that are in it, and the price of the boxes... I do have some fears. A lot of these cards are going to just... Some of these cards are going to tank in price. There's too many cards that are very high high in price pre-release. And typically the market does dip a little bit. And then retracts and gets to its... Um, excuse me. And gets to its price point. So we're going to see a dip and a raise and a dip and a raise. We're probably going to see a little bit of a roller coaster here for a while. I'm telling you, sorry, I had to get a drink there. I'm telling you guys, this is, is a very dangerous place to be if you're Magic the Gathering. Very dangerous place to be. Um, you do not want this to be a thing, a commodity that investors are fighting over and casual players can't afford. You don't want it to be that way. You want to go the other way. Now, 
the other things about this set that really stand out, and I didn't mean to go into such a such a rant on the price point there, but as you guys can probably tell, it's something that it matters a lot to me. So I'm gonna save my other two, other two or three topics on this set for another video, um, and just kind of leave this one focus on the price. I am going to do a a audible here. 10 minutes into this video. I planned on jamming all this up in just about 10, 15 minutes, but I'm passionate about the price point. I've, I have been the new Magic player that couldn't afford some of the cards. I, I've been in that spot. I've been the competitive Magic player that needed to upgrade his deck to be at the highest level of competitiveness and had to spend a couple hundred dollars. And I understand that Especially as we're coming out of a pandemic. Some people are not going to be able to do that. Some people are. And I get that Magic the Gathering is trying to, you know, enter this new world of variants and collectibles. And, you know, not everything is for everybody. However, Modern's becoming the new legacy. Uh, the player base is going to want to play these formats. Legacy, Commander modern and i think that some of these prices are going to make it very hard and it's going to create a problem within the community i don't know I, I will always be passionate first and foremost no matter how illogical it is and i'm a big fan of logic i, I practice as much as i can no matter how illogical it is i'm always going to be a fan and supporter of the casual magic player i think they're the lifeblood of this game the person who just buys the packs randomly for the joy of opening the pack. The person who buys cards and goes and plays kitchen table magic with their friends. That's really the people that I connect with the most when it comes to this game. Do I love competitive magic? Absolutely. There is something, right before the pandemic when I was playing Pioneer, there was something amazing about waking up Saturday, doing last minute um, meta game review, and then heading up to the card store to meet my friend. And join a, a local 8 to 10 person tournament. There was something just so exciting about that. That I was doing that consistently. But we all start with kitchen table magic, so I will always be a protector of that form. Anyways, guys, I have rambled a lot more than I intended to. I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned because there will be more videos on this very set coming out. Thank you so much. Tony K with Urban Girl Scout Media. Living the dream as always and ending this financial rant.